So um, what we've been doing post-COVID and we continue to do now is, is build back up those opportunities for people to get engaged. Um, so back to your question about feelings of, um, of belonging. So the way that I think about this is um, as a bit of a prism. So um, there are there probably is a dominant culture on campus, I think it's fair to say, but there are lots of other cultures too um, across campus. So as I see it, our job, um, number one is to not make the dominant culture absolutely dominant and crush everything else out of existence. Um, but number two is to um, foreground all the other cultures as far, um, and I'll explain what I mean by that in a minute, as far as possible so they're visible to all students. So. Um, if you're a student and you arrive here and you really connect with the people that you live with in your halls of residence and you form a real bond there, or you really connect with the people who are on your um, course, brilliant, that's fantastic. Big big tick, uh, off you go, make friends, get involved, um, do whatever you, you want to do. What we then have to do is make sure that um, uh, if people don't find the, their kind of sense of place or belonging through that, all the other ways in which you can find your community and what's, what's what I'm talking about, I suppose, when I, when I talk about cultures at the university, are made really obvious to you. So uh, all your opportunities to get involved in student societies, for example, are we making those really clear to you? Are we working with the students' union to make it um, easy for you to access these, easy for you to set up your own society if there are, you know, if there's something you're interested in that um, isn't running? I mean, the students' union have got about 140 societies, so it's quite likely there is something for you, but, you know, we need to make those obvious to you. We